Now, uh, something else that I oftentimes really stress from the start as we're learning about uh, 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 as we're learning about Linux and learning about uh, uh, how how do I navigate and how do I use uh, this this per this particular type of computer? Um, what I oftentimes recommend is uh, just just take a step back and go out to Google Images, right? So you're going to encounter uh, a computer at the file system level, and I think if we just wander over to Google Images here real quick, all I'm going to do is uh, go and Google something like Linux file system, right? Something like that. And if we switch over to images, you'll see a whole bunch of different pictures that, you know, they all look sort of the same, right? What, what, what they're emphasizing here is here's the structure of which the files are, are kind of built. And this might be a little bit, uh, 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 let, let's say, abnormal from what you're used to if, you, if, if you're familiar entirely with Windows systems where you have things like the C drive and whatnot. Um, when we're working with a Linux file system, you know, things are completely different. Things are structured differently. And at the top of a lot of these file systems, these pictures you see, they kind of have the slash location. So it's really important to understand that when you're working in a Linux file system, that slash, just the slash, that is an actual location that you can visit. And so, as you can kind of see in some of these pictures, they say they, they, they even toss in the root word. So yes, many times we, we refer to the top of the file system in a Linux file system as the root location. In other words, just the slash. The slash is a location that we can go to. And so in some of the future videos, I'm sure you'll hear me say, hey, we're going to navigate to slash or we're going to start with slash. And you have to realize kind of what I'm talking about. So the structure of a Linux file system, there, there are some similarities, uh, obviously, between these pictures, but there could be a little bit of nuance as well. A lot of that comes back to just the different distributions, right? Uh, what does what the file system look like if you're on an Ubuntu computer versus a Kali computer versus a Scent computer? Yeah, sure, there's a lot of overlap, but there certainly are going to be some things that are different as well. So anyways, I like to always kind of toss this out from the start and say, Let's understand that we're we're about to encounter a file system. We're about to go in there and kind of dive into the weeds and learn how things actually work. You know, so let, let's make sure we can take a step back and get a kind of a, a, a mental picture of this. Um, the reason too why I stress things like Google Images for looking at this type type of stuff is is certainly for things like that scent machine. Right? When you're working on a scent machine and all that you have is the command line, what you lack is those visual indicators to say like, hey, I've got some stuff over here and then some stuff over here. And oftentimes that's how we operate on our normal day-to-day -day laptop or desktop is like, okay, I've got my icons over here and, and you start to have this visual map. And that's, of course, what makes our GUI so intuitive to use. That's why computers and phones, you know, a little kid can pick up the device and just start using it. Well, when you peel all that back and all that you have is the command line, it becomes important for you mentally to still have those maps, to still understand that, okay, there's locations on the computer, I can move, where are my files, where are my folders, what are the things I'm interested in. And so I find that uh, just referencing some of these pictures, finding a picture that you kind of like, something that like just sort of clicks with you with the appropriate amount of detail and depth, I think that, that that's a, a really useful activity when we're, when we're just starting out. Some of them look a little bit more technical, kind of in this tree format. Some are a little bit more left to right, so who knows? Knows. Maybe that's more the way your brain works. Like you might have a little bit more of a left to right type structure. It's not really that there's a right or wrong. It's just kind of find find one that works for you and say, okay, th this is what I'm going to start with as I'm working to understand my Linux file system. So. The other thing that we're going to really dive into in a lot of these videos um, is going to be understanding a lot of commands. Like when you peel back again that GUI and all that you have is just you and the, uh, you and the server, you and the operating system, a lot of it comes down to the commands. Um, and so I, I kind of have just a quick informal overview of some of the commands uh, 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 from a structure perspective. What I find when, when students are taking on more complex tasks, many times there's a breakdown in just this base fundamental understanding of, okay, what is the command and what is it that I'm trying to do? Um, and so I, I always like to kind of uh, emphasize this stuff up front with some of the uh, e easy starting commands. It seems a little a little bit overkill, but it's like, yeah, trust me, you're going to want to have this kind of drilled into your head for later. Um, so yeah, you're going to learn certainly a bunch of commands, and that, that definitely is going to be something I find a lot of new students uh, uh, struggle with. That's one of your first big tasks is, what are some of the basic commands that I can learn so that I can accomplish tasks at the command line? Um, and then as you continue to learn, what you learn is that, well, some commands have additional options. Uh, most commands have some options that will provide a additional functionality. An additional functionality, for example, will be maybe the base command wouldn't actually take some action. It's capable of doing it, but by default it doesn't. Well, if you add on some additional option, now the command does something else in addition. Um, 
sometimes, kind of on the reverse side of that, sometimes you might run a command and the command will just have a ton of output. There's way too much output and it's not in a human readable format. And so sometimes you might add on an additional option to say, I'm going to run this base command, but I'm going to run it with some type of additional functionality that actually filters down my results. So it's a little bit easier for me to read. So again, you're going to learn about some base commands and then you're going to try to expose yourself to what are some additional options that are out there. Um, on top of that, sometimes commands want what are called arguments. And arguments are a little bit more uh, uh, user input driven. And the most common example of, a, of an argument is, is just a simple file path. Um, in other words, you're going to have a command that wants to run on a file or wants to run on a folder. And you have to be able to tell the, the, the command, this is the folder that I'm talking about, or this is the file that I'm talking about. So something like that, it's not really additional functionality. It's you're taking the command and pointing it at something. Okay, and so options could have arguments. Sometimes the command uh, just has the arguments fed directly to it. But nevertheless, I find this as a good starting place just to say, all right, let's take a look at some commands. Let's understand the file system at a high level. Let's understand that we've got some dis different distributions and need to kind of get some practice across different distributions. And that's really what a lot of these videos are all about. So let's go ahead and jump over to our Ubuntu computer and get started with this here today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and log in here uh, using just the sandbox and password. And kind of as I mentioned, I'm really just using this sort of as a platform. I'm, I'm not focused entirely on let's run off and try to get this thing set up uh, as, as a web server. You know, we'll get to that part eventually, like what the mini hack expects us to do. But at least for now, we're just trying to get some understanding here with a basic file system. Um, you're also, of course, going to see these little messages pop up all the time. Like, yeah, you haven't connected to the network yet. You're going to get these connection failed messages. I'm just kind of ignoring those for now. Um, I, I know that we're not connected to the network just yet, and it, Ubuntu gets a little angry when, when it's not connected to a network. It feels all lonely and left out, and it's like, yeah, just be quiet, Ubuntu. We'll, we'll ignore you for now.